Roxana, Alex, how are you? Hello, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. How was everything? It was great. Did you have a good weekend? Yes. It was a typical weekend. Okay. And what is a typical weekend? What do you do? Um, on Saturday, I worked. And on Sunday, I got to church. I went to church. And what time do you go to church? Uh, in the morning. From uh, 8.30 to 11.30. Okay. 8.30 to 11.30, three hours. Yeah. Okay. It's a long time. Yes. <laughs> okay. And your church always is three hours. What? Your church mass is three hours, your mass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And what do you do after that? Oh, in the afternoon, I uh, I go out went went out with my dog mm -hmm. um, my sorry for my dog. If I no think is, uh, my dog is in the living room because it's raining here a lot. Here too, it's raining, so sometimes, mm hmm Yeah. And I watch some movies with my mom. <laughs> I watched some movies and I did some house shorts. Okay. I watched some class. Okay, all right, good, good. Well, it sounds like a busy weekend, right? <laughs> The chores, Sorry. the church, all the things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when you are doing the chores, do you listen to music? Do you watch movies? What do you do? Uh, in in my church. Chores. In the region, in the in the meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, I listened to music to uh, how do you say ignos? Uh, emails, anthems, yeah, mm -hmm. and study the Bible and take a uh, Jesus Christ dinner. <laughs> okay, all right, good. All right, what about you, Nuri? How was your weekend? Hello, good evening, teacher. Mm, I was working, teacher. On Sunday? Yes, I work the weekend. What do you do, Nuri? I'm a stylist. Ah, hairstylist. Yes, I work in a beauty salon. Ah, yes. It's, and where is the beauty salon located? Nuri? Where is? Yeah, where? In, in Santa Ana, San Miguel, San Salvador? No. Where? Yeah, yeah, my... Where, where is... Yes. No, no, it's Lourdes, Colón. In Lourdes, ah, okay. Lourdes, Colón. I live, I live here. Hey, and I used to I used to live in Lourdes. Mm -hmm. And you live in, in Nuevo Lourdes, in Valle, where, where do you live? In Arboledas. La Arboledas. Okay. I live in Arboledas. I know the areas. Okay, good. All right. So as yes. you can see, excellent. Yes, Nuri, go ahead. Tell me, tell me. No. Nuri?
Nuri, you okay? Okay, I think maybe Nuri can't listen. All right, <laughs> she's quiet there. All right, guys, are we ready? We continue then? All right, good. So the first thing we're gonna do is catch up with our partners and make sure there are no issues. So take a moment, uh, discuss with your partner, ask follow-up questions, see how everything was this weekend and what happened, okay? Teacher, excuse me, my internet is, is bad. It, I think it's, it's because it's raining. Yes. I don't know. Yes, no problem, Nuri, it's okay. Don't worry. All right. <laughs> Let's take a moment. Mm -hmm. There. Omi, you back, huh? Welcome back, Omi. We're gonna send you to the group. Okay. Hey, Ivania, Marvin, how are you? Hello, Ivania. How Hello, are you? Good evening. So, how are you? Ivania, no, no se te escucha nada. Hello, how are you? Okay, there you go, Ivania. Good, good. And you? Good, good. Um, I feel better today. Great. No more COVID? Um, no more symptoms. <laughs> I don't know if it's COVID, but no more symptoms. Okay. How long yeah. were you sick, Ivania? Uh, since Wednesday. Yeah. 
And, yeah. and today you feel more or less or still a little tired, some flu? Um, only with a, uh, with a headache and mm. a little cough, only that. Okay, okay. Mm. Yeah. Maybe take a little bit more time to, to recover. Yes, yes, but Wednesday and Thursday was terrible. I can imagine. And you, Marvin, yeah. how are you? I'm fine. I'm fine, thank you. How was your weekend, Marvin? Uh, well, it was awful. Awful? Yeah. What happened? Because I get sick. Uh-huh, Ivania got your sick for the, yeah. in really? the meeting. But hey, not Ivania. calling? Uh-huh. I copy her. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But not uh, COVID, Marvin? No, it wasn't. Oh, okay. uh, I don't know what what happened. It was a uh, headache and temperature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I don't know how to say vomit. Vomit. Uh -huh. Vomit is throw up. Yeah. Huh? Vomit. Yeah. Throw out. Yes. All from Friday uh, the evening uh, until today. Mm. Yeah. Many, many days, right? Yeah, yeah. Almost yeah, three days. days. Yeah. I think Ivania had five days, right, Ivania? Five or six days? Yes. Today is the sixth day. Okay. Yes. Really? A pure Ivania? Yeah. No, Ivania. Oh, hello, Alexander. <laughs> How are you? Hey, I told Ivania, what happened with Ivania? I, I asked about you the last weekend. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we said that she was sick, so but now yes. now more or less. Now I'm alive. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So guys, what we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and review one more time uh, the topic from last week. Last week we saw on Friday, we saw the relative clauses. The video is a little long. We're going to watch the video again to remember, and then we're going to practice. Remember, the most important relative clause is, is extra information or is important information. Those are the two points, right? So relative clauses give more information. Always, we're going to use a specific word. For example, one thing, something. Then we're going to use your opinion. I hate, I love, I enjoy, I like, and then the topic, right? So always we're going to say, for example, uh, the thing, the thing I love, and then describe, okay? But the video is going to help us to understand better. Who leave their cell phones ringing on their desks? This time they can occur in the subject or the object of the sentence. Stay around and listen to the explanation. Relative clauses and noun clauses. A relative clause. Okay, before she goes into the long video, I want you to understand the function or the purpose of this grammar. The purpose is here. Send to the explanation. This is the purpose. The idea or the function is to complain, to describe when you don't like something. That is why we use it. We can also use it to talk about something you love and why you love it or enjoy, but that's the idea for using this type of structure. Relative clauses and noun clauses. A relative clause can occur in the subject or the object of a sentence. Something that bugs me is people who take up two seats on a crowded bus. The thing that I can stand is co-workers who leave their cell phones ringing on their desks. The thing I can stand is co-workers that leave their cell phones ringing on their desks. Some sentences use a relative clause and a noun clause beginning with a question word such as when. The thing that I hate is when kids ride their scooters on the sidewalk. One thing that bothers me is when my friends don't show up on time for things. What is a relative clause or adjective clause? 
relative or adjective clauses provide information about a noun or pronoun in either the subject or the object of a sentence. Relative clauses, use. Relative or adjective clauses give additional information about a noun in either the subject or the object of a sentence. They are dependent clauses. Relative clauses help connect two separate ideas. For example, that is the school. I went to that school as a boy. That is the school which I went to as a boy. Relative pronouns. Relative pronouns introduce relative clauses. Relative clauses tell us which person or thing the speaker means or refers to. Who is the subject, whom the object, meaning people. Which, whose, refers to things. That, instead of who, whom or which, where, when, and why, gives the reason why. They are relative adverbs. Remember, the pronoun refers to the same thing as the relative pronoun. Example, the students are smart. They are learning relative clauses. The students who are learning relative clauses are smart. Who is used instead of they? Let's go over this example. One thing that I hate is people who talk during a movie. One thing is the subject of the main clause. Leaving us with that I hate is the relative clause that describes the subject. Noun clauses. A noun clause is a sentence inside a sentence. A noun clause gives more detailed description of a subject or object of a sentence. Let's take a look at these words. They are noun clause markers or connectors. That, if, whether, WH words, how, what, when, where, which, who, whom, whose, why. WH ever words, however, whatever, whenever, wherever, whichever, whoever, which is informal, and whomever, which is formal. We want you to note, except for that, noun clause markers cannot be omitted. Only that can be omitted, but it can be omitted only if it is not the first word in a sentence. Let's take a look at these sentences. Subject, noun clauses. Noun clauses are subjects of verbs. That George learned how to swim is a miracle. Whether Fred can get a better job is not certain. What Mary said confused her parents. However you learn to spell is okay with me. Notice the structure. Subject noun clause plus verb plus object. Object noun clauses. Noun clauses as objects of verbs. We didn't know the bill would jump. Can you tell me if Fred is here? I don't know where he is. George eats whatever is on his plate. Again, notice the structure. Subject plus a verb plus object noun clause. Read this sentence with me. One thing that bugs me is when people talk during a movie. Let's work with this sentence. There are two clauses in this sentence. The bugs me is a relative clause. And when people talk during a movie is a noun clause. Now type examples using relative clauses in the subject and in the object of a sentence. Okay, as you can see, the grammar is fairly extensive. It's quite long and there are many things to know about it. But what did you understand was the important things? What were the key elements? I think it's important that the, the, the word that you use depends on, on the, if it's a person, if it's an object, 
if it's a uh, possessive, I think that's a, a really important part that we have to uh, look out for. Okay, good, good. And which words did you hear are the ones that you should use? Uh, who, whom, whose? I think th those are the, for me, those are the, the hardest one to use. Okay, that's right, that's right. We use who, whom, whose, that, also that. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? What else did you understand or the other points that were important? The other words that, where, when, and why. Okay, good, good. So really there are a lot of words that can be used. As you're mentioning, all of those are like here. Who for the people, whom for object or, or, or things, sorry. So we have who and whom we can use for people, which and whose for things. And, and here, if you watch the video, you can take notes of when it's possessions or the things that you can use. The best one that I recommend is use the word that. That can be used like who, like whom, or like which. So it's really universal. So if you're not sure which one to use, use the word that, and it's usually going to be correct. The ones that are different are where for location, when for time, or why for explanation or reasons, okay? Okay, so let's think about what is your favorite place to visit in El Salvador? What is the most beautiful place or the place that you love to visit the most? I like to visit Ataco. Okay, why? What, what is an Ataco? Uh, it's in uh, Aguachapan, like that, something like that. But I like it. I really, I like to try to Ataco because it's fresh. And I don't know, I like the old way to Ataco because I, I feel like I, I free to San Salvador, the smoke, the crowd. And for that reason, I don't know, I, I feel I connect to the, the fauna and flora and for that reason. And sometimes when I came, uh, I try to uh, uh, like a two or three days in the, hotel in a taco because I, I like uh, wake up in the morning, listen to the bird, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, okay. That is where you use the relative pronouns. A taco is a great city. It's a beautiful city. It's a wonderful, your opinion. The subject, a taco. The opinion, beautiful, wonderful, nice, great, okay? And then the location, where. A taco is a beautiful city where I can relax without music of the city, where I can uh, breathe fresh air, where that is how we use the relative pronouns. Subject, okay. a taco, the city, uh, the place, the supermarket, okay? Your opinion, okay? Uh, it's a beautiful place. It's a nice place. It's a great place. It's horrible. It's terrible. I hate it whatever your opinion is, and then the information. Okay. So, so? Okay, yes, yes. Yes? All right, let's try one more example, one more example. All right, okay. Who, who would like to give me one more example of a place they like in, in El Salvador? One more place. The beach. Okay, in El Salvador, you have a lot of beach. So give me, what do you like? Do you like it or you don't like the beach? I love to uh, go to the beach and uh, because, um, gosh, I want to use those, but I don't know. Let me help you. Uh, Let me help you. Let me help I, I love you. to eat uh, seafood. Okay. Uh, I like to, to, to have a, a fun family time. And, okay. Um, that's that's how you use it that's how you use it now we need to structure it the beach where where i have a fun time with my family and then what is I, in it, la libertad is uh, uh, is beautiful is uh, uh -huh. very cheap is expensive whatever you are describing so the beach 
I don't know which beach, but you are going to tell me the beach where I went on my honeymoon with my husband is wonderful. It has beautiful room service, for example. So, so the idea? Yes. Yes? yes. Okay. Ivania, tell me, ¿cuál es la chica que te cae mal? <laughs> Anyone. <laughs> no, no, no. Alguien te cae mal, Emanuel. Who, who, who? Tell me. Tell me. The ex to my boyfriend. Okay. Right. And why? It's an example. <laughs> example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Example. Why? Why? Uh, because um, she's flirting with my boyfriend. Exactly. And I. that is where we use who. Gino, es para vos. That's where we use who. So the... Uh, my uh, my boyfriend's ex-girlfriend who flirts with him or who I don't like flirts with him. You see, that's how you use it. The subject, my, uh, I don't know her name, uh, Michelle, for example, let's say Michelle, who flirts, flirts with my boyfriend is ugly, is fat, is horrible. It's say uh -huh, whatever. Yeah. It's okay, guys. Mm. Galena? Yes? No? <laughs> Alexander. Uh, I'm reading the chat. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, okay. 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 <laughs> okay. So now we understand. Now you have the example how to use who how to use which, how to use where. Now, for me, it's not important what you want to describe, but you have to describe something and give your opinion and why. That's the movie, the beach, the person, Andrea, whatever, but use, use the structures, yes? Five minutes, five minutes, practice with your partner and then we come back. Okay. Okay, let's try. Okay. Let's try again. Something give up.
Okay, any questions? It's okay. Yes, it's okay. Okay, good, good, good. All right, now let me show you the next activity we're gonna do to make sure that it's clear. Is here in 2.2, in a platform 2.2, we're gonna do the knowledge check. You're going to use here, read the sentence. When kids ride their scooters on the sidewalk, okay? What is it? What do you think that is? Is it a noun clause or is it a relative clause? Now, remember what did we hear a little bit about that? That is from here in 2.1, the difference between a noun clause and the relative the clause. Clauses. Okay. So what are the relatives? The ones that use this. So relative clauses tell us which person, thing, or speaker uh, they are referring to. Those are the relative clause. That gives us the specific information. The noun clauses are usually the words like this, okay? That tell us other things for a little bit more of the markers. So here, the noun clause, normally the subject, right? Okay, in the case of the other ones, we can also have used there. So with our partners, we're gonna take a moment, discuss it. Remember, this part is a little bit more about the grammar. Not so much about the usage, but more about the grammar to see if you have it. So with our partners, the same partners, say, partner, what do you think? Is noun, is relative, what's, what's the idea? To see if you get the ideas, the difference, okay? Okay. All right, let's try it. Maybe we need a little bit more time than five minutes because it's a little bit harder, but we'll take a look. Everybody's okay, so-so?
All right, guys, any question? No. No? Oh, no, no. Can you explain uh, another time the difference between relatives and now clause? Yes, so relative clause give additional information and noun clause talk about the subject. So okay. let's take a look a little bit about it. And then maybe with that, it's going to give us a better understanding. Let's walk through it together. Oh, wait, somebody uh, raise your hand. Mm -mm. No, okay. It, it was me, but yeah, let's do that. Uh -huh. Okay, okay, let's take a look at it. All right, so here we're gonna go through them and here I'll make it, it'll make it easier for us and we'll go through faster. Okay, so here we have noun clause. So here we're talking about the subject about the kids. Okay, mm -hmm. so we're talking specifically about it, but here you're giving your opinion is additional information. That I hate. Okay, mm -hmm. so as you can see, the idea of the relative clause is the additional information. Mm -hmm. Okay, here the the idea of the noun clause is the subject of the uh, of the situation. That's going to be the main difference. Now it's more important than anything is just getting the used to of using it, using the who, the that, the which, the when, all of those. It's nice to know, if, for example, when it's extra information, extra information, or when you're talking about specifically about this, you're talking about my friends, okay? Here, it's just extra information. I don't know what, but something bothers you. That's extra. Here, I don't know what, but something you, you can't stand, right? So this is the idea. Here, whenever we, we really see that only in all of the examples, only number five and number one are the ones that have the noun clauses. Those are the ones that are talking about specifically about a topic, like a person, um, a thing. That's when we have the kids or my friends. Is that easier? Okay. 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 All right, good. So let's go on to 2.3. We're going to talk about things that annoy you. What is this annoyance? What is annoyance? Angry. Something, something bothers you. Something bothers you. Something that makes you angry. Something you don't like. Something you hate. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's take a look. Let's see this. You know, something that drives me crazy is waiting for people. What drives you crazy? Verbs, drive, get, make, phrases, on someone's nerves, someone crazy, someone down, someone mad, someone sick, someone out of the wall, someone's blood boil, someone's goat, under someone's skin. I will give you a minute. Try to make all the combinations possible. They have to make sense. Once the time is up, I will show you the phrases. Okay, these are just phrases that you use to describe things that bother you, okay? In a moment, we're gonna see how we match the word drive, get, or make.
phrases to talk about annoyance. Okay. So that is the most important, how you use them. We use them with those expressions like drive or get. I'm going to send a picture into our group. That way you remember and you don't forget how to use them in this moment. Okay. Are there any expressions that you don't understand or any expressions that are not clear? Get someone down. Ah, so it's like to be depressed or to be sad. So how do you use that in a sentence? Um, Andrea's boyfriend uh, got her down because he was cheating on her. Uh, uh, and God, someone's God, God, God. Get, got, uh -huh, in the past tense. Remember, all of those are the verbs. You can put in present, past, or future. So get someone's goat. Whoa, I see the expression. Very good. Okay. So to make somebody, uh, to take someone's things. That's a very unusual expression. Uh, I'm going to be honest. Most, most Americans would never use this one. They would use probably drive you up the wall. Mm -hmm. So all of these are, uh, when someone leaves the refrigerator open, uh, it drives me, it drives me crazy. So you see, you don't have to say someone. You can change the someone for a person, for you, for the pronoun. So example, uh, when I don't wash the, the dishes, it drives my mother crazy. Okay. When I don't finish the report, it makes my boss's blood boil. It's okay. Any questions? Really, I have a, I don't know a, to a share. many questions, but I need to uh, read and understand later. Okay, so don't worry. In this moment, what we want to do is we're gonna try to use those expressions to describe things that bother you or things that annoy you. In order to describe things that bother you or not annoy you, in the chat, you have a link for many questions. Those questions are going to be useful for our uh, conversation, okay? So I'm gonna share my screen and I want you to ask me a question and I'm going to demonstrate how to use it. Go ahead, anyone can ask me any question. Teacher, does smoking bother you? Oh. When people smoke in the restaurant, it drives me crazy because I start to cough. Okay, give me another question. I'll give you another example. Uh, teacher, who is the most annoying celebrity? Uh, uh, Kim Kardashian makes my blood boil because always is trying to sell a, try to sell you perfume or clothes. And for me, it's not very beautiful. It's okay, guys? Mm -hmm. one, or one more example, or it's okay. example please <laughs> okay Roxana ask me one question um I don't know mm -hmm. from the list ask me a question I'll from them yeah sure I didn't enter that link ah well Mm -hmm. Somebody else then. Uh, 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 question, teacher. Yes, Ivania. 
Um, what's the most annoying thing about your classmate, your oh. students? The most, <laughs> the most annoying thing is um, that maybe that they don't pay attention and ask uh, questions three times. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's okay. I don't mind explaining, but it's annoying because I explain and then they ask again. Ah, no, no, no. Go. I, 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 like this. <laughs> but not in this group, right? In another. Group. <laughs> another no, no, it's, it's normal. It's the, it's the just life an of example. the student. It's only an, it's the life of the student. It's the reality. It's like in the <laughs> training at work. In the training at my job, I, I, I don't want to be in the ah. I don't pay attention. <laughs> I, think it, I think everyone, all of us, when we are in the, I know, I want to finish quickly. So that's what we're going to do. Right now, we're going to go quickly with our partners and we want to use those and try to use the expressions. Try to try to use the expressions to answer, okay? Okay. All right, let's try one more time. Okay.
Okay. Ooh. How you feel relaxed, release the stress. I <laughs> know. Me cae mal esto. Ah, how do you feel? It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> the things that annoy you, the things that bother you. We're going to be taking a look at those more tomorrow and using the expressions. Don't worry. These are expressions. Just like in El Salvador, we have our own expressions. These are others. You don't have to use them, but it's important to understand them when you hear them. Yes. Okay. 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 All right. So remember, tomorrow we continue in the platform. It, we're going to review 2.4 and then continue on with our platform for tomorrow. Okay. 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 Good chair. All See right. You. Bye. See you guys. Nice okay, thank you. See you guys tomorrow. Good night. 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 See you everybody. Bye bye. bye.